Thank you all for being here. Welcome um, to you guys. To those who don't know me, I'm Angie. I'm with Starfish SEN Marketing. I think I know most of our participants on the call today. Um, and this is our monthly training webinar. It's a free 30 minute training. It happens on the second Wednesday of every month at one o'clock central standard time. Um, you always hear from Paul and then we usually have somebody else also joining, but today is actually only Paul um, and he'll be sharing about paid ads. Um, like I said, just a minute ago, if you've missed any of the previous trainings um, or you just wanna go back for a refresher, they can all be found on our website, starfishseo.com slash training. I did put that URL in the comments or in the chat, excuse me. Um, all of our trainings are also available on our YouTube page. Uh, we are recording the call today um, so that we can <laughs> share it on our page, um, but it's only recording the presentation, not our beautiful faces. Um, you are all muted, although now I have given you the right to unmute yourself. So I don't, I'm not worried anybody's going to go nuts, um, <laughs> but you are muted. Um, and at the end, we will do a live Q and a where if you have questions, we'll ask you to unmute yourself and then we can have that conversation. Next month is an exciting, uh, class. We're going to be doing leveraging LinkedIn with a special guest, Shiloh French. She's from surf pros team Olson. Um, and they're really all over the place. Uh, she herself is located in the Denver Metro area, but team Olson is. Nationwide, um, so she'll be joining us then. Um, so for this week month, though, you were talking, you're hearing from Paul. Paul is our CEO and leader here at Starfish. He's got over three decades of marketing experience in the healthcare industry, as well as retail and restoration. He is a business owner, public speaker, teacher, coach, creative writer, and today he is coming to us live from Tennessee. So with no further ado, hand it over to Paul. Thank you so much, Angie. I appreciate that. So let's see if we can get everything working here. Um, obviously, we love reviews. We love talking about reviews, and we love other people that love reviews. So uh, please feel free to scan our little QR code there, and uh, we recommend that uh, you do the same thing with your business. And every chance you get it, it uh, you need to be asking people to give you feedback, not only for the good reviews that help you show up better, but also for the bad reviews so you can find out what you can improve on. That's a important process that a lot of people avoid when they do uh, their business. But let's jump right on in. We're gonna be talking about paid ads. This is in general, it's a very high level conversation. We're not gonna get in the weeds on too much because a lot of our uh, folks that are asking questions are just wanting to understand what are the dynamics? How does this work for me and my company? And so uh, without further ado, let's talk about first the difference in SEO versus SEM. And one of the things that people don't realize is they go hand in hand. They're knit together very close. Search engine optimization is a, a focus on optimizing the website content. And that allows people to um, actually see what, uh, it allows Google to see what you have, what your services are. And it's really important, but that's all free. That's something that basically is organic. You put the right blogs on, you put the right content, you put the right, uh, images and alt text, and all of that really adds up to allow you to uh, start getting new traffic to your website. The problem is you can't really see that as uh, you can't see where to attribute that traffic to. You just know they came to your website or they called your phone number. Whereas it, SEM is search engine marketing, that is focused on getting traffic uh, immediately, and you can get the visibility from uh, all of this. So that can come in many forms. Uh, the, the most common would be something like uh, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, Instagram. Those are real common popular areas where people start doing that. So um, let's go on and talk about the numbers here. 49% of small businesses invest in online advertising to increase their visibility and, they, and to reach potentially new customers. Uh, businesses in the service sector using targeted digital advertising experience a 76% increase in leads compared to those without targeted ads. And then service-based businesses that are that invest in digital advertising experience a 27% higher conversion rate compared to those that rely solely on organic methods. Now, one of the things to keep in mind there is once you know you're spending money on this, a lot of times people will uh, raise the bar on their game. They'll answer. They'll be more attentive to answering the phone. They'll be more careful in asking the right questions. They'll find out from people because they're paying for this lead. They might as well take full advantage of closing this business. So there's probably a couple of reasons behind that. In addition to just 
generating the leads. But then also, uh, let's uh, skip on over to increased visibility and brand awareness. If you run paid ads, it's going to allow your small business to reach a, a larger audience to gain visibility and to have a highly competitive landscape that you're competing on. So when the real estate is so important for Google, they're going to look and see who's showing up in the top three, who's showing up on the Google business profile, who's showing up in the Google guarantee, who's showing up in the sponsored ads, and then organically as well. Um, if you can target uh, a specific demographic, it's kind of neat because you can say, I only want to target homeowners. I only want to target parents. I only want to target people who uh, have buy running shoes on a regular basis. We have uh, customers that want to take advantage of, uh, you have to be careful in some industries like healthcare because there are HIPAA laws that you have to be careful around that you don't actually uh, target, you know, you can't target a cancer clinic for people that are with a, a medical solution. That's just not a healthy way to approach business. So you have to be careful when you are doing this that you get the right demographic and get your product or service in front of the right people uh, so that they can discover your business. Also, when you run paid ads, uh, the advantage is you have precise targeting options, which that may be, well, some of the things that we'll cover on Google, Facebook, and Instagram today are redundant. So I'll probably skip over some of them, but you recognize that these things do apply to everybody. We've all seen an ad show up where after we uh, look for an ad on Amazon, we start seeing that same ad on Facebook. We start seeing it on Instagram. We start seeing it on uh, eBay, Pandora, uh, Hulu. You see the same ad follow you around. And that's because somebody has identified you as a potential buyer for that demographic. So with your company, you can target uh, a small, as a small business, you can target a very specific uh, demographic. Also, platforms like Google ads, Facebook ads, and uh, other uh, places allow you to get really granular. So you could get into the weeds on, hey, I only want to target people in this zip code. I only want to target people that are, you know, going to the gym. I only want to target people that are drinking this product or eating at these kinds of restaurants. And that really allows you to identify exactly who you want to service and uh, who you want to send your products to. Um, the best thing about, uh, I shouldn't say the best thing, but one of the really good things about uh, doing paid ads is you have very specific reporting that you can see. So you see immediate uptick and you can see immediate outcomes. You can actually go to your Google Analytics page. You can see the results and say, I had this many people come to the page. These people were new visitors. These people actually clicked the, the call to action button. Um, and also you'll actually be able to drive traffic there faster. So if you have a retail location, you'll be able to see immediate uptick in traffic. People will be clicking on their phones. And when they click that ad, you'll be able to literally go in and say, these 15 people clicked on an ad and made a purchase as a direct result of this ad that we ran. That comes in very handy to know how to, you know, structure your next ad as well. So paid ads are often, uh, they're, uh, it's really important to A-B test them. You can find out that uh, people have figured out, hey, people are more prone to purchase a car facing left than right. That sounds simple, but if you start A-B testing, you can find out which ads are actually the most successful and what makes them successful. Over time, you can identify, hey, this ad is targeting a, uh, a middle-aged crowd. This ad, therefore, you want middle-aged models. This ad is targeting a, uh, or maybe in the case of an older crowd, you might want a younger model because you want them to feel, hey, if you take our product or if you engage in our service, you'll look younger, you'll feel younger. You know, uh, the cola company has been doing that for years with, uh, if you drink our product, you're going to be having fun at the lake all day, every day. You're going to be on the beach, you know, you're going to be cool in a hot environment. So it's really important that you determine what your copy is going to be. And it allows you to track this and drive more traffic to your specific business for your specific product. So another thing that's really valuable about the SEM portion is it's scalable. You can actually uh, tailor fit it to a small demographic. Once you've saturated that, you can grow into the next one, or you can find by discovery, hey, our keyword is showing up in these searches over here. Maybe this would be a good opportunity for us to uh, target our service or product to these people. Um, you can also set a budget. That's really important because some of our customers are in construction or in uh, storm work, and they will go to an area 
and they will say, you know, let's just pick a random number of 5,000 a month, and they may spend all 5,000 the first week during the storm. Well, that's not a good use of that, uh, you know, allocation of those funds. You need to space that out. So, hey, once we hit our peak, uh, performance right now, so that we're not overwhelmed, we want to go on and engage, you know, people uh, uh, weekly, you know, maybe every three days, maybe once a week. So that's really important. Also, paid ads can be easily scaled up or down. So if you did run an ad, let's say you're running a special and people are flooding your store, uh, you're like, hey, we're running out of product. We need to pull back on this. You can actually pull back on the ad, not spend as much money on the last half of the month until you get more product in. So that's a very important advantage to paid ads that uh, SEO does not allow. So paid ad 101 is start by familiarizing yourself with the uh, the major advertising platforms, Google ads, Facebook ads, and Instagrams are basically the easiest place to start. There's literally dozens and dozens of other places you can go for ads, but this is a really good place. And Google, Facebook, of course, owns Instagram. They have a lot of data already on your customer base that you're targeting. So that's why it is really valuable to become familiar with this. And then also you can learn about what features and what target options they have. So you can uh, essentially say, hey, I want to know more about who would be interested in my business, and they're able to help you out with that. You can also clearly define your advertising goals. Do you want to increase your website traffic? Do you want to generate new leads? Do you want to drive sales? Another really popular one that people don't give credit to is branding. You know, McDonald's does not plan on you buying and making a purchase every time they air a commercial. What they want is when you think of food, they want to be in the forefront of your mind. And that's really important. If people, if you have a specific niche that your business uh, is targeting, there's a huge value in people recognizing your brand, your logo, and the fact that you're showing up in these ads. So you wanna clearly define that, and that way you can craft compelling content to drive people that direction. Um, also, you can set a realistic budget for your paid ad campaigns. You can allocate funds. Uh, a lot of times, the value of this too is to say, hey, some people are spending a lot, you know, they may be spending 150, 200 bucks a click. And if you set a $500 budget, that's five clicks and you're done, you know? So there's no sense in setting a budget in a market that is already saturated with people advertising if you're not willing to get into the game and actually drive enough revenue there to, you know, allocate enough revenue that you can drive traffic. Also, you can track cost per click, people that actually click on your ad or click on call, cost per impression, which means that may just show up on the side of the page. That's very handy. A lot of that's more branding related. And then there's cost per acquisition. And that may be click here to learn more, to download our free PDF or something like that. Uh, click here to our landing page to read about what our services are about. So that gives you an opportunity in advance if you plan that to really play with that and figure out which one is working best for you driving new, new leads. Also, it's really important that you uh, would create eye-catching content. This is especially important in uh, uh, Instagram because it's really uh, photo-driven. But it, you wanna make sure that your brand identity stays true all the time. It captures people's attention. And then it also allows you to develop a strategy to see which ads, which pictures, which images, which videos are really driving the most traffic to your site. So let's hit Google ads first and foremost, because that's probably the, the most common question we get is, uh, how do we build a Google ads campaign? Well, you wanna make sure that uh, it's based on your objectives. So you create which groups you wanna target, you create which product you wanna sell or which service, and then you target that uh, specific demographic. You can also conduct keyword searches through a, a tool uh, that Google offers for free that allows you to actually see what, when people are looking for these websites and these particular products, what words are showing up most often. Uh, you can also implement call tracking and monitor the effect in your, of your campaigns. This is really important. Back in the day, we used to do this with billboards. We put one number on the billboard, one number on a radio ad, and one number on a TV commercial. They are all three different numbers, but they all lead back to the same phone number. So when the business answers the phone, they get the same exact experience. The advantage though is an ad you can look at the end of the month and say, we got five calls from the billboard, four from the radio, and 10 from TV. Therefore, cost per click for, for lead from the television might have been a better ad spend. So it might be better to spend your money over there rather than the billboard. And that's the same thing applies to Google Ads. You can actually see 
where am I getting the most traffic? Is it coming through a Google guarantee ad? Is it coming through a Google ad? Is it coming through a, uh, some, a lot of cell phone traffic? That's really important and you can monitor that and you can make real time changes to that based on your data. Um, also, you can use Google Key, uh, the keyword planner. That's what I was mentioning. You can see what keywords are showing up and what other people are using as a keyword. That's really helpful to find out what other uh, industry leaders are using as a way to draw traffic to their website and their, you know, their phone number. Also, lastly, you can create very compelling a copy that generates a call. You don't want to just say, if your if your goal is to get somebody to call. You need to make something very specific and intentional so that when they do click, uh, they get exactly what they're looking for. And you can track those conversion rates and optimize your ads uh, by testing this. It's called A-B testing. You can say, hey, we've found more success with uh, advertising with uh, a vehicle in the picture than uh, pictures, you know, uh, ads that did not have that. Or when they had a technical person there, that technician, sometimes those get better uh, response than something of just a, a piece of equipment. You want to actually have somebody doing something. So we're going to talk about Facebook and Instagram. We'll go a little bit quicker on these because we've already covered some of this stuff, but Facebook does give you some really valuable data that nobody else offers because you're going to go in there and they know what ball teams you like. They know what, uh, uh, you know, coffee you like. They know what uh, kind of running shoes you buy. If you click on a Nike page and like it, they're going to know all that data already, and that's going to help them to isolate who you are. And there are there are actually statistics that show that Facebook, if you've liked uh, over ten different things in the same category, Facebook has a better track record of selecting what you would like than what you would select yourself. So when you're looking at the screen, going, I don't know, maybe I'll click on here, maybe I'll go there, um, especially in bands. Facebook will recommend if you like these bands, then you'll love this band. And you click on it, you're like, wow, that's exactly my favorite kind of music. So they know a lot of data. Take full advantage of that. You can also segment your audience based on specific criteria, uh, people that live in a cer certain area, people that own homes, people that are uh, uh, you know, making a certain dollar amount per year, people that have children. All of those are very relevant things that you would want to include on your uh, you know, search criteria. You can also have various ads. There's ads that show up on your phone. There's video ads. There's carousel ads that spin around. You can select the one that really does represent you the best as well as drives the most traffic. So that's important. And then uh, you can monitor your performances very real time on Facebook. I think it's even, uh, you know, same week you can see, hey, I have a huge uh, uh, return on my ad spend this week. Uh, compared to last week. What did I do different? What ads did I run? What pictures did I run? What weather things might have affected that? If it's raining, people may not be going out to your stores often. And then you can also implement retargeting strategies, which is really important. Some companies don't allow this on their own website, but it's really important. If somebody is looking for information from you and you can somehow find out another piece of information to triangulate where you can say, hey, we want we saw that you came to our website and you were looking at these shoes. We've got three other sales that we're running right now. Would you be interested in any of these? Those are really important and Facebook allows you to do that. Um, Instagram has a lot of the same things. However, the most important thing is that your image quality is very high resolution and it's very stimulating. So when people see it, they're like, oh, wow, look at that picture. And or it could be entertaining. It could be funny. You know, it could be um, uh, educational. If you want to do a little uh, a screen that shows. Uh, how many businesses succeed or fail with or without your product. That's sometimes something that uh, would be an infomercial or info static that you could uh, put up there for them. You can incorporate relevant hashtags in your captions. This is also huge to find new people looking for your service or product. You can use it on multiple platforms, but Instagram seems to kind of be the, the kingpin for using that. And then also it's part of meta. So the benefit is you can use all of the options in the Facebook business meta, you know, domain. So that's kind of cool. Also, you can encourage user generated content by running ads contests and you can feature a customer testimonial or feature interactive campaigns where somebody says, hey, uh, we use this company. They did a great job. We just wanted to take a picture or a video of our house here and let you know what they did or this product, this widget, this, this clothing. And you can actually engage your audience to actually do marketing for you. It's a brilliant strategy and Instagram is a perfect market for you to be able to do that.
You can monitor your performance just like you can on the other platforms. And you can actually uh, see where you're getting the most, you know, bang for your buck and adjust accordingly. Um, I would recommend experimenting with all the different ad formats at first. You want to see, because one, you think, well, nobody would ever do that. Surprisingly, people have run a campaign and said, they don't, they don't initially know why, but later on they were able to determine, hey, a lot of people responded to this and we didn't really take this into consideration, but this is where we're really getting really good return on our investment. So just for a quick recap, um, if you do run a paid ad campaign, it's gonna allow your business to reach a larger audience and gain visibility in a highly competitive landscape. It's gonna provide an advantage to you when you're targeting specific people because you know something about your customer already and you're able to reach that specific demographic. You don't wanna waste it on people that are not gonna buy your product. I mean, there's no sense in selling. Uh, people will, uh, you know, toy companies will target ads to kids, but they really are, they know that the kids are gonna go to the parents and say, the kids aren't buying the toys, parents are. So they wanna make sure they include that demographic as well. Uh, you can also uh, uh, see a lot of traffic driven really quickly to your site or to your company. So that's a huge advantage if, hey, we're really slow right now. This is traditionally a slow time of year. We're gonna run a special, we're gonna run a sale, and we're gonna go on and take advantage of that by having uh, paid ads in addition to our sale. And then you can also scale it up or down. So like I said before, if you run out of, if a coffee shop runs a special, buy one, get one free, and they run out of product or material, then they can just basically stop running the ad and they're not going to drive any more traffic that way. So I hope I did that justice in the short time I had. Um, maybe leave a couple minutes for questions. Does anybody have any uh, questions in particular that uh, they've listed in the, I can't see the chat, Angie, so you may have yeah, to speak up. I got you. Yes, so we did get um, a question and Wendy had the question of how are Google ads different from Google guarantee ads? Ah, well, I don't know if I have time to go in depth to all of that, but basically Google offers you uh, a dollar amount that you can spend for various leads. And so there's one that's customized just for your phone. There's one that's customized for a computer monitor. There's one that's customized for, uh, you can actually run ads that show up in, when you click on like a uh, ad section on a Google search engine results page, at the bottom, there's a, a little tab that says see more here. When you click there, you can have ads that only show up in the click more section. So that's, uh, uh, and, and where I would start is I would start by just running some, a, a few A-B tests to see which one is getting the better, the best results. And once you determine, hey, I've got a lot of people clicking over here, uh, it may be cheaper to actually get a, a result over on one of your, you know, one of your other pages than it would be on your primary page. I've seen that where, uh, and I don't want to get too detailed, but there's something called a long tail keyword where you basically say, I'm looking for tennis shoes. Um, well, that's going to pull up all the tennis shoe companies in the country. But if you say I'm looking for tennis shoes in Nashville, now that's going to narrow down a search to just people that are targeting tennis shoes in Nashville. And then you could say, I'm looking for tennis shoes for Nike tennis shoes in Nashville. Each time you add something, you're going to pay less and less for the longer the keywords string that you're using. So that would apply to some of these other areas. If not more people are advertising there, you may actually get more traffic. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think it did. We've got a couple more that we'll try to get to. So um, another question Vanessa had, which might be a specific one. We, we may need to reach out to HQ to get clarity on this, but she asked, does Surf Pro HQ allow retargeting? Uh, not on their website, they do not. Uh, there are uh, a few ways to do that outside of that. One, you could retarget through your email. Uh, you could retarget through uh, uh, an ad campaign. If you actually have a campaign that uh, tracks a phone number or an IP address, you could feasibly triangulate that data. But no, I, I don't believe there's a number of companies that do not allow you to retarget on their homepage. Okay. Uh, because you would have to set up a separate landing page and a third party website, which is definitely off limits for companies like Surf Pro. Okay. Um, two more questions would be, what is sort of a suggested budget for first timers? Which I, I think the answer will be, it depends on many things. So we actually wouldn't tell you one, but Paul, if you have more than that. Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple of uh, tools that we use and we could recommend some to you as well, if you wanted to take the conversation offline, that would basically, I would say, 
you know in Dallas, New York, LA, and Miami, and Atlanta, you're going to have a way more aggressive competition than you would in, say, you know, White House, Tennessee, where I live. So um, I may get some bleed over from uh, Nashville, but ultimately, if somebody's targeting my city for your service or product, there's a huge advantage to knowing what the landscape is. And there are tools, one I've used in the past, it's SpyFu. And what you can do is you can get a 30 day free trial or 15 day free trial, try it out. And then if you like it, you can go on and pay their, uh, you know, several hundred dollars a month. But what you can do is put in uh, your competitor. So if you're a, you know, uh, Mexican restaurant, you could plug in your Mexican restaurant competitor near you and see, hey, I know they're spending money because their ads are popping up. What, what do you think they're spending? And SpyFu will say, Based on educated guessing, it's not a, it's not an exact science and it's not hard data, but based on our understanding of the landscape, we think they're spending about $85 a click for this particular kind of, you know, and SpyFu will give you a good uh, point. So let's hypothetically just say you're at $100 a click. Uh, if you want 30 clicks, you're at $300 immediately, right? Or 3,000, sorry, uh, $3,000. So that's immediately something that you're like, hey, where am I going to get the most bang for the buck? Is that a valid strategy? Did I do the math right there? I don't know if I did. Angie can correct me if I didn't. But okay. essentially, you want to figure out what you think other people are spending, and then ultimately, you just want to do trial and error. So I would start a little bit higher than what you expect because there's always going to be an extra cost, and that's something we didn't cover. A lot of people, when you run an ad campaign with them, they don't really show behind the curtain with them what, what they're actually doing. You're just paying them, you know, uh, X amount of dollars per month. And in turn, they give you a report every month, but you don't know how much money went to Google and how much money went to the ad campaign. So that's really important, uh, an important question to ask at the start. How much of this money is actually going to Google? Because we need to know in order for us to establish a, an accurate budget. Yeah. Um, awesome. I think we've got time. Last question here was any tips on Yelp ads? Ah, uh, yes. So I have a love hate relationship with Yelp. I know a lot of people do not like Yelp, but I have seen customers in a very specific uh, demographic or in a specific uh, region that just crushed it on Yelp and they made tons of money through Yelp. Uh, there's all kinds of nuances. So if you really want to get into the weeds, I'd be happy to have an in depth conversation with you about Yelp. But yes, so if you're in a yuppie market, if you are in a coffee shop market, if you're in a place where people are, lack, for lack of a better term, I can't do a man bun or I probably would do one. But uh, if there's everybody running around with man buns and uh, iPads and they're going to the coffee shop, there's a high probability these people are using Yelp to find good places to eat. Um, if you're in a place where they're driving tractors around and you're just caught behind the, uh, the, you know, the cattle feed truck, they're probably not using Yelp as much. Their word of mouth is gonna be much more valuable. So you wanna make sure that you identify your audience. And once you identify your audience, if they're using Yelp, then it's worth considering. Last, last component on there is first thing I do for Yelp is I look up my service on my industry. And if I see Yelp ads popping up, then somebody else has seen value already in your market to spend money with Yelp there. I would say too, that you want to be where your customers are, which is what that picture Paul is painting. So whether that be Facebook, Instagram, Yelp, Google, I think we would agree all customers are on Google, but then where do they spend more time? Is it Facebook, Instagram, Yelp? You want to be where your customers are. Um, well, I, I think that's it. We don't have any more Yelp representative won't stop bugging you. Yes, they're persistent. <laughs> Oh. They are persistent, Vanessa. It is something. Um, okay, well, I don't think I don't see any other questions. I had one is... question, Angie, that just got texted to me. And, okay. Uh, they asked about Yahoo and uh, you know other platforms, other search engines. So yes, there are other platforms you can run ads on. Being being one of them, it's start where the biggest piece of the pie is first, and then narrow it down. Once, you, once you've identified, hey, this is where the biggest piece of the pie is, or this is where my highest return on investment is, then you can start looking at Yelp, you can look at Bing, you can look at you know, other locations that you can run ads. But I would start with the easy stuff first to get those demographics, because they're not going to have nearly as robust of tools as Google or Facebook on determining your audience. 
once you've determined that, then I would take that information and roll it into some other ad campaign. So, Perfect. hope that was helpful. I guess I should probably pull up my uh, little uh, screen here. <laughs> that shows our next training. Yes, so perfect. Our next training again, every we're doing these every single month, second Wednesday of every month at one o'clock central standard time. It's always the same link. Um, next month will be Shiloh Fet French, excuse me. Um, but she's Fetch from Mean Girls. Uh, never mind. Um about leveraging LinkedIn. She, if you have not checked her out yet on LinkedIn, do so. She is a powerhouse there and is just using LinkedIn fantastic and it fantastically well for her franchises in her market um, for B2B connections. So uh, we will get all the tips and tricks next month. So I would encourage you to join us. If you're not able to join it, join us for this call, that call or last calls, you know what I'm saying. We record these, put them on our website. So this time next week, these will be It'll be updated on our website, starfishseo.com slash training and our YouTube page. Um, and then also just if you would like to set up a one-on-one -on -one call with Paul and myself um, and Martha too, she helps with all of our paid ads, um, just send us a quick email. Um, everybody, in this link, everybody on the call knows us and has our contact info. So if that's something you'd like to do, we would like to um, get that set up. But thank you all for joining and thank you, Paul, for sharing all that valuable information. Yeah. Thank you guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week.